just a moment, we will bring you With Cradle and Clock, starring Herbert Marshall on The Cavalcade of America. But first, here is Gain Whitman with information on another of DuPont's better things for better living. Today, many types of clothing, rainwear, sportswear, children's garments, are treated with DuPont Zeeland, durable water repellent, to make them shed water. Fabrics treated with a water repellent are not waterproof or coated. They do not shut out air needed for body comfort in either rain or shine. But with quality fabrics treated with Zeeland, you will keep dry in most rains. And thanks to water repellents, serviceable garments are made in a wide variety of styles, colors, and fabrics. Zeeland, durable repellent finish, is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. America, the Pony Express, the covered wagon, the jet propelled plane, America, the World Series. America means skyscrapers and haylofts, the ping of a pioneer's flintlock, and the rat a tat of the riveter's machine. Home Sweet Home and Basin Street Blues. The glare of a blast furnace against the midnight sky. America is your story. America is you and everyone you know. And now, starring Herbert Marshall in With Cradle and Clock on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Yes, who is it? It's me, Mr. Kent Irish. I've come to do the room. All right. I didn't know you was home, Mr. Kent, if I'm putting you to... Lord love me, you packed all your belongings. I didn't know you was going anywhere. Visit, maybe? You might call it that. Well, that's nice. Does your body good to get away for a while? Oh, you must be going far. I'm going to America. America? What on earth for? To get away from ignorance and superstition. To get away from prejudice and stupidity. What? Why, Mr. Kent? Let me ask you a question, Iris. Question? Yes. Why do you call me Mr. Kent? Well, ain't it because you're a man? And a doctor. I'm also a doctor, Iris. But I don't see what that is. No, no, you don't see. No one sees. A man spends ten years studying, poring over books, sitting up all night to pound knowledge into his head. Knowledge that will benefit mankind. Then what happens? Well, I don't rightly know, Mr. Kent. Dr. Kent, doctor. Well, there ain't no cause for you to shout at oh, me. Oh, no, you're right. There's no cause to shout at you, to blame you or any one person. That in the year of our Lord, 1702, a doctor can't attend a woman at childbirth. <gasps> Mr. Kent, I'll have to remind you I'm a lady. Yes, you are, Iris. And someday you'll be married. You'll have children. I'll take you to attend to your own affairs. This is my affair, Iris. And the affair of every other doctor who wants to fight criminal superstition of the Dark Ages. You mean you think it's right and proper for a man to to be with a woman when she... <gasps> Mr. Kent. Right and proper, Iris, because God intended the baby to be born healthy and strong. Here, the law forbids me to practice. That's why I'm going to America. Where I'll have the chance to save human lives. <laughs> Well, Mr. Kent, this is New York. Just a few moments and you'll set foot in the new world you've been so anxious to see. Oh, Captain, I didn't hear you come up. Why, <laughs> I suppose you'll be able to wait for the dory to take you ashore. Did I seem that anxious? Aye, <laughs> and more. You've looked forward to this, haven't you? More than anyone knows. Smell that, Captain? Oh, what? Freedom. Opportunity. Oh, it smells more like tar and spices to me. Oh, you're a cynic, Captain. And you, Mr. Kent? I... Perhaps an idealist. Mm, admirable, but hardly profitable. I wasn't thinking of profit, Captain. 
Not in terms of pounds, shillings, and pence. Then my head's harder than yours, Mr. Kent. What other profit is there? The profit for humanity. For mankind. You see, sir, an idealist must also be something of a fanatic. Um... Captain! Captain, my wife! Oh, easy, My wife, sir. Captain. Uh, easy now. Uh, what's the trouble? You must call a midwife, sir. The excitement of docking. My wife... A baby? Yes. Oh, then why didn't you say so? Bosun. Aye, sir. Uh, skip ashore and fetch a midwife. Quick now, and uh, hoist the emergency flag. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, will it take long? A few minutes. And meanwhile, you'd better get back below to your wife. All right, but hurry. Please hurry. Captain, perhaps I can help. You? Uh, oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. Kent. This calls for a midwife. I'm a graduate physician from the maternity clinic of Moriso in Paris. Maternity? Uh, a man midwife? No, no, not a midwife. An obstetrician. Captain, we're wasting time. That poor woman below... Oh, I've never heard the like of it. No, it's impossible. Captain, it's not impossible. Please take me below to that woman. But for a man to be present at a time like this is unheard this of. This is an emergency. I... Huh. I don't think the baby will, will observe the formalities. All right, Mr. Kent. But it's up to the woman and her husband to decide. Come along. Sir, this is no time to argue. Your wife needs a doctor now. But, but you're a man. You want your wife and baby to live? Oh, don't frighten them, Mr. Kent. I'm not trying to. Well, sir? I... All right. Good. Is that you, Henry? Yes, dear, and I brought a doctor for you. Close the door, Captain. Oh. Now lie still, my dear. There. That's better. Oh. Quietly now. Lean back. You're going to be all right. You... You're a man. Henrik. I'm here, ain't you? I'm here. Captain, get all the hot water you can carry. Clean sheets, pillowcases, hurry. All right, I'll have someone bring them. Henrik, the midwife. I, I need her now. It's all right, my dear. I'll take care of you. Oh. She's she's ashamed, Mr. Kent. I know, but you... Oh, Captain, I... Well, who are you? Who am I? I'm Grandma Van Hooten. Now all of you get away. The midwife. Hedgie, the midwife's here. Take, take him away. Henrik, you've got to let me stay. Stay? Well, who are you? He's a doctor, Grandma. Doctor? <laughs> and a man to boot. Now leave me alone with her. Oh. There, there, my darling. Grandma will take care Henry, of you. Henry, don't be a fool. Don't let this ignorant old woman meddle ignorant? with... Ignorant? Why, you young fool. What do you know about babies? What do you know about women? Get out! I will not. This woman is in a dangerous condition. She doesn't need your sorcery. She needs a doctor. Please, someone help her. I will never fear. Grandma will help you. I brought everything. My herbs to hang on the door. <laughs> Powdered bones to make the child strong. <laughs> and McClure. You're not going to use that filthy rag in here. Uh, I've used it for 20 years. It was good enough for... Get out of here before I throw you out. Don't you touch me. Don't you dare. The water and sheets will... Well... What's all this? Ah, you're the captain? Yes. Then throw this young fool out of here. Wait. Wait, all of you. Hetty, listen to me. Can you hear me? Yes. There's a doctor and a midwife. Which do you want, Hetty? I want Grandma. Uh -huh. Now, you see, the lass knows best what's good for her. Now, now I'll put my axe blade under the bed to cut the pain. Captain, <laughs> I refuse to leave this cabin while this ignorant old woman trots out her filth and her mumbo-jumbo. The birth will be difficult. There's a chance... You have that... no choice, Mr. Kent. No choice. But there's a choice between life and death for this woman. The choice between science and superstition. Henrik, you've got to listen. Get out, Mr. Kent. Get out. But, Captain... I'm afraid you'll have to leave, Mr. Kent. I'm in charge on board. If this man wants his wife to be attended by a midwife, I must ask you to get out. But you're making a horrible mistake. Get out! Very well. Sorry. I beg your pardon. Uh, one moment, sir. One moment. Uh, there's a woman about to have a baby. If you would direct me... Huh? <laughs> Who are you? The sorcerer's apprentice? I don't understand, sir. I'm the port doctor, and I saw the emergency flag... Doctor! So... They don't want a doctor in there, sir. They want the spells and sorcery of the Dark Ages. They want the ignorance and filth of that old woman who murdered that poor creature. Oh, I see. The midwife, eh? Grandma Van Hootchen. You know her? Unfortunately, Yes. I mean, I am Dr. Lawrence Steen Vic Baxter. I am Jonathan Kent. Dr. Kent. Well, I'm honored, Dr. Kent. I came 3,000 miles so to get away from the thing I saw happen in that cabin. I, I tell you what. Doctor, be my guest. Come ashore with me to my home. Well, perhaps a glass of good wine will cheer you up. 
No, but I... Oh, please. You're tired now, perhaps disappointed. But there is a new world, Doctor. A young one. And a young man such as you can grow with it, implant some of that zeal and idealism so that our children will benefit. What do you say, sir? I... Very well, sir. I shall be honored. <laughs> so you studied for five years at the University of Leiden. Anatomy and physiology. Then five more years with Morisot in Paris. You worked in the maternity clinic there, yes? I delivered more than a hundred healthy children there. Then... I will finish it for you. Then you went out into practice and discovered that the laws of the old world prevented a man from practicing, obstet practicing obstetrics, yes? Exactly. So I came to America. To find law on your side with the people against you. Yeah, yeah, Meneer. So it is. You sound a little disillusioned yourself. Dr. Kent, I'm older than you. At one time, I had the enthusiasm, the ideals of youth, just as you have. But I learned a great lesson. A lesson? What? That one cannot fight what is traditional with people. Take away their superstitions and their old wise beliefs, and they accuse you of heresy. But this isn't heresy. It's science and knowledge. If we admit we cannot fight this... this witchcraft, then we've failed as doctors. We can do other things as doctors. I know. But I want to bring children into the world, and I'll fight for it, Dr. Baxter. As hard as I can and as long as I can. <laughs> Your health, sir. Lawrence, I was... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I did not know you had a guest. Oh, Rosalie, please come in and Janet. Good evening, Father. My dear, this is Dr. Jonathan Kent. Dr. Kent, my wife, Rosalie. It is my honor, madam. Welcome to our home, sir. Uh, Janet, Dr. Kent, my daughter, doctor. Miss Baxter. It's so nice to have you here, doctor. Well, sit down, my dears, please. Uh, are you going to stay in New York, doctor? There's room for another doctor. Many more. But uh, I'm, I'm a specialist. Really? What do you specialize in, Dr. Kent? Well, I... Dr. Kent is an obstetrician. Oh? Well, that... That's rather an odd speciality, isn't it, Doctor? I don't think so, Mother. There's certainly nothing odd about babies. Janet! Please, Mother, what's shocking about babies? But, my <laughs> dear... <laughs> oh, Rosa, you don't be foolish. I'm not. But, uh, well, why do you choose that, Dr. Kent? Because I believe a baby has a right to be born healthy. And strong. I agree with you. Why shouldn't a man be an obstetrician? Because, because he is a man. You see, Dr. Kent, prejudice in my own home. It's nothing of the sort, Lorenz. I was thinking of Dr. Kent. Of me, madam? In what way? I'll tell you, doctor. Mother means that the law won't keep you from practicing your specialty here, as it did in Europe. But something else might. Prejudice. I'm afraid you'll find women much the same here. Janet, my dear, you seem to have grown up suddenly. No, Father, not suddenly. You're just used to me. Well, if you insist on this one branch of medicine, Dr. Kent, it'll be hard. I wasn't expecting it to be easy. Oh, well, the patient? I'll answer it, Lorenz. I have something I must do anyway. Excuse me. Dr. Kent, do you really mean to open an office as an obstetrician? I do. <laughs> when you get hungry... The home of the Lorenz Steinweg Baxter's is yours. Thank you. And, Dr. Kent, please don't let them discourage you. After coming 3,000 miles... Lorenz, it was a message for you. Oh, what is it? A report. A young woman died on board ship in the harbor. Was, uh, Was her name Hetty? Why, yes, that was her name. But how on earth did you know? I knew it hours ago. You see, Dr. Baxter, I have seen for a long time. But it was not your fault, not at all. There was nothing you could do. You attended her, Dr. Kent? No. Ignorance, superstition, and the dark ages attended her. Grandma Van Hootjens. Oh, don't feel too badly, Dr. Kent. There was nothing you could do. Nothing you can do. Madam Baxter, I was raised an orphan because the midwife's ignorance lost my mother at birth. If the Grandma Van Hootjens go, and in their places come medicine and science and cleanliness... We shall have more mothers and children who will live. You are listening to a story entitled With Cradle and Clock, starring Herbert Marshall as Dr. Jonathan Kent, 
on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Dr. Jonathan Kent has come to America to find freedom of opportunity. This he does find, but he learns that the prejudice of the people against his specialty, obstetrics, is as strong as it was in the old world. Just now, we find him in the Baxter living room while Janet plays. Jonathan. You didn't hear a note of what I was saying. Oh, but I, but, but I did. I was just uh, listening quietly. You were just sitting there. Discouraged? Well, three months is a long time without a single patient. Jonathan, listen. If some socially prominent woman called you instead of calling for the midwife, wouldn't that make all the difference in the world? Wouldn't that help to break this, this silly prejudice? Yes, it would, but... What chances are of that? None. Well, it would solve things, wouldn't it? And where is the socially prominent woman who would call in Dr. Jonathan Kent? Margaret Van Corten, Sam's wife. Who? The mayor's daughter. She's expecting a baby in two months. We went to school together. Janet, it's a wonderful idea. So wonderful that we're going to see Margaret Van Corten right now. very sweet of you to call, Janet, and to bring Dr. Kent. I've enjoyed the evening so much. And, Doctor, I want to wish you every success. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to sound like a pessimist, but I do think that what you're trying to do is, well, hopeless. But, Margaret, please do come again, Janet, very soon. And you'll come again, too, Dr. Kent, won't you? I shall be delighted. Good night. Good night, Margaret. Good night, Mrs. Van Cortland. Do come again, Dr. Kent, as a guest. You see, Janet, it makes no difference. The prominent or the obscure, they all have the same prejudice. Janet, a thing like that must not go on. Perhaps it would be better to forget it. Perhaps it's not the time. Time? Do we have to wait until the right time to prevent death? I say no. That's what I wanted to hear you say, Jonathan. Jonathan! Janet! Oh, it's father! Dr. Baxter, what's the trouble? Oh, get in the carriage. Come on, no time to waste. Uh, all right, driver, go ahead. What? The servants told me where you've gone. Father, what is it? Yellow fever. It's broken out along the waterfront. We are all needed badly, Jonathan. Yellow fever? Epidemic? It might be. Janet, we leave you at home. Jonathan and I... You will we... not leave me at home, Papa. I'm but, going uh... along to nurse. Oh, no, not you, Janet. You'll need me, Papa, and so will Jonathan. We could use her. So? All right. Faster, driver, Faster! Fifteen more cases in five days. Jonathan, we must hurry. Yes. Janet, sleeping potion for this man. Keep him covered. Mm. All right, Dr. Baxter, let's go. Three weeks and no slackening. Jonathan, please, try to get some rest. Not now, Janet. It's too much to be done. This the last stop, Dr. Kent? The horses are about worn out, not to mention me. Last stop, keep going, man. We've just started for tonight. How is he, Janet? Much better, Jonathan. Good. Hello, Mr. Van Cortland. How do you feel? Hello, Doctor. I feel all right now, thanks to you. And a good constitution? No. No, it was you, Dr. Kent. I'm grateful. Forget it for now, Mr. Van Cortland. Just lie back and try to get some sleep. You may not be out of the woods yet. All right. You're the doctor. Everyone's talking about you, Jonathan. Father says you're a wonderful doctor. For yellow fever? Yes, Jonathan, for yellow fever. Hello, Dr. Baxter. Oh, Janet, there are some patients in the corridor who want nursing. Will you attend to it? All right. I'll meet you outside, Jonathan. Yes, Jonathan. Why did you send her away? Because I wanted to talk to you. Jonathan... I've watched you and Janet, and I am not displeased. What's the trouble, then? Well, my boy, you showed what a good physician you can really be. I should be proud to have you for a son-in-law and... Yes? 
Well, now that you've proved yourself and the worst is over, you'll have a splendid chance to go into general practice. You'll become known. There is enough work in the town for many doctors. Just a moment. What you're trying to say is there's work for doctors, but for one who practices my specialty. But if you try to go back to the mothers and babies, you will starve. Hmm. I do not wish to see Janet share that. Dr. Baxter, I won't give up. Oh, don't be a stubborn fool. I'm sorry, but I've got to be. This is America, Dr. Baxter. A new land, new opportunities with freedom of expression and enterprise. Of course, but there are no buts. My mind is made up. Try to cheer up. I'm sorry, Janet. Was I looking so sad? A little, yes. Oh, look at the people celebrating the end of the epidemic. It's like coming out of a prison into the light. All right, darling. May I have the next dance? And everyone asked. The mayor! The mayor! Has anyone seen the mayor or, or Mr. Van Cortland? Yeah, what's the matter? It's Mrs. Van Cortland. It's what? the baby. All this excitement and noise. Who's with Mrs. Van Cortland? No one. I had to leave. You to left her alone? Well, I had to. Everyone else is here. Janet, come with me. Come on, hurry. Jonathan, how is she? She is not too well. It's going to be difficult. Where is she? Where's Margaret? Where's my daughter? Your Excellency. She's in there? Yes. Please don't go in, sir. Oh, Mr. Kent, uh, thank you, sir, for coming. This way, Grandma. Grandma? Grandma Van Hooten? Yeah, it's all right now. Grandma's here. Your Excellency, your daughter has a chance if... Chance? What do you mean? If we deliver the child immediately, there's a good chance they'll both live. You? You're the young fool I saw on the boat. Go in, Grandma. Hurry. Please, Your Excellency. This is no case for an ignorant midwife. I tell you, your daughter needs everything that medical science can give her now. There's no place for a man in here, Mr. Kent. As Margaret's father, I order you to leave. As Margaret's husband, I want you to stay. Sam, thank heaven you've come. Sam, have you lost your mind sending a man in there? I'm sending time? a doctor. Will you, Dr. Kent? I insist that this man leave. I say go in, doctor. You saved my life once. I trust you. Please, go in to my wife. Thank you, Mr. Van Cortland. <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> you can't put the books way off in that corner. Why not? Because the room looks empty enough as it is. Jonathan, we don't have enough furniture for our new home. Janet, come here. Hmm? Look. A cradle and a clock. Those are enough to build a country. That's the way this country was started. With the cradle to shelter new life. And the clock to breed new minutes for the centuries to come. You have won your battle, Jonathan. And you have faith in those who will come after. And faith in America. In the freedom it gave me to win my struggle. God grant we may remember the beginning and hold fast to the opportunity of this great country. Yes, Janet, I have faith. And someday the whole world will look to our land and say, there is freedom. There is the hope of humanity. Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return. But first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. Explosives were manufactured in Europe 700 years ago. But for centuries after they were made, they were used by Europe's pretentious little princelings for nothing but war. War. Only when businessmen began to use them in mining were they put to work for mankind's benefit. Few persons, even today, realize the enormous amount of useful work even a small amount of commercial explosives can do. Nothing else packs so much useful energy so economically into so little space. A few sticks of dynamite can dig a drainage ditch across a wet field that would take a farmer weeks to dig by hand. Heavier charges quarry tons of rock for roads and breakwaters, help to build railroads and dams, and handle any number of other jobs which might otherwise take months and years. But energy compressed in small packages can be dangerous. 
The history of commercial explosives has been a continuing search for greater and greater safety. A dynamite plant built by the DuPont Company way back in 1880 was one of the first plants of any description to try to mechanize a process so workmen would not be exposed unnecessarily to danger. DuPont research has never paused in its effort to make explosives safer and better. Nowadays, the DuPont Company manufactures dozens of formulations of dynamite. And, under the trademark, Nitramon, a blasting agent so safe that you can run over it with a truck or fire a gun into it without danger. An additional safety measure is a special primer for Nitramon, another product of DuPont research. The DuPont Company's latest contribution to safety in blasting is an electrical blasting cap sealed by a rubber closure and fired by wires coated with bright-colored nylon plastic. The bright colors, red, yellow, and blue, show plainly against the rocky walls of a mine tunnel. For coal mines, which are black, the nylon plastic is gleaming white. For salt mines, which are white, the nylon is black. These electric blasting caps, like Nitramon, and the many DuPont dynamites constantly improved by research, may justly be described as DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our star, Herbert Marshall. Rather than add anything to tonight's story myself, I feel you might be interested in meeting one of our fellow citizens who lives in Los Angeles. So happens he is a physician. It also happens that, like Jonathan Kent in our story tonight, he came to America to practice medicine unhampered by the prejudices of the old world. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Hans Schiff. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. The struggle of Dr. Kent is typical of the difficulties that have always impeded scientific progress. Fortunately, in this land of opportunity, Dr. Kent finally achieved the freedom to pursue his fight without restraint. I am one of the physicians who left Europe a decade ago because ruthless oppression stifled our efforts to be constructive in our study and practice. The United States gave us access to every field of medicine with absolute freedom of choice. Dr. Kent's determination to destroy superstition and ignorance by bringing scientific knowledge to the aid of everyone helped to open the doors to medical advancement. This freedom of research and practice is what America means to a physician today. Next week, DuPont Cavalcade brings you Faye Bader in a special radio play adapted for Cavalcade from the bestseller Cross Creek by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. It's a story of a woman who found good neighbors and a sincere, friendly spirit when she moved to Florida. City born and bred, she was new to the ways of farming. But the folks in this community, in typical American fashion, helped her realize the true meaning of the words good neighbors. Be sure and listen next Monday to Cross Creek, starring Faye Bader. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Bernard Dreyer, based on a book of the same title by Nude Stoneman. In the cast with Herbert Marshall tonight were Lureen Tuttle, Martha Wentworth, Gloria Gordon, Ramsey Hill, Francis X. Bushman, Mary Jane Croft, Dorothy Scott, Ira Grossell, Byron Kane, Ken Peters, and Eric Snowden. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Faye Bainter in Cross Creek on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.